morning. Today in our liturgy, we are celebrating the Monday of the fourth week of Advent. Now let us stand and begin our time of prayer and worship. We will recite the entrance antiphon on page 130. A branch shall sprout from the root of Jesse, and the glory of the Lord will fill the whole earth, and all flesh will see the salvation of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our gospel today is really another repetitious gospel, for it reminds us of the Annunciation, a time when Mary is first told of the coming birth of the Savior. Before we begin, let us recognize how God has spoken to us in the words of a friend or family member, in the events of a life that unfolded as we had not expected, the ways in which God has broken into our life. For a moment, let us be grateful for the way God continues to guide and tell us of God's love. You came to bring salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You showed us how to live a life of faith. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us our sins. And may God bring us to life everlasting. So let us bow our heads as we pray to the God who comes among us. Lord our God, your word that was received by Mary through the message of an angel and became the dwelling place of divinity, filled with the light of the Holy Spirit, grant, we ask, by her example, we too may in all humility hold fast to your will, accomplishing your goodness. We pray this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Blessed the Lord, you are the King of glory. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Let the Lord come. He is the King of glory. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Let the Lord come. He is the King of glory.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, for the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for, who, who, for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure you've had the experience of looking at pieces of great art, especially religious art, and one of their favorite themes is this idea of the Annunciation, Mary confronted by the angel, hearing the good news that Christ the Savior, the Anointed One, is to be born. Sister Melanie Svoboda, a Notre Dame sister who writes very well, had a reflection on that concept. She was reflecting on the painting that many of you saw. One of the more famous ones is done by <clears throat> Fra Angelico. <clears throat> and they have Mary, who is kneeling on a predu, a, a kneeler that's covered in great silk. And then she, Mary, is dressed in a long, flowing, heavy velvet garment. Now you look at that and you say, well, that's a beautiful painting. But this is nothing like it. She's a Palestinian woman. But in the painting, she looks more like she came from Norway or Sweden. And then the heavy velvet, you think, she lives in a desert. She wouldn't have even dared wear anything that heavy. And then off to the side is the angel, looking like someone who had worked out all week long in a gymnasium, is Gabriel. Tanned and very handsome and, of course, with white wings. So Melanie says, how can we possibly identify with this scene when it's like that? Certainly there's beauty in it. But she was trying to call us to say, if we follow that and assume that's the real experience, we're going to miss what is really the heart of this Annunciation. St. Teresa of Avila had a great line when she simply said, God walks amid our pots and pans. That's really more the truth of it. I saw a recently a more modern uh, interpretation of the Annunciation. And in that particular expression, they had Mary hanging clothes on a line and a basket of clothes that were still to be hung, overflowing. And then a rather rugged looking angel who looked like he'd been up all night with combat boots on, talking to her as she's hanging the clothes. That was probably not anywhere close to either the painting or that one, but it comes a little closer to saying to you and me, are you looking for, are you expecting, amid the pots and pans, amid the everyday life, 
to have someone come and break open God's promise to you. That can come in the voice of a friend who encourages you when you are discouraged. It could come in the events of life that unfold after a prayer and you weren't expecting that this prayer could be answered in such a generous or compassionate way. Or it can come in the invitation of someone to do something that will ultimately give you life. There are a lot of annunciations in our world, but they happen in the everyday, and we'll miss them because we go over them, looking for that velvet-covered woman or that winged man to stand to tell us something. We'll miss the ways in which God very gently but very often comes to us. Look for the annunciations in your life. They're there. It just means we have to listen and look a little differently for God to speak to us. Our God will come and will answer our prayers, for God is not silent over the centuries. So let us with that confidence, indeed with that trust, ask the Lord once more, to hear our needs, to listen to our concerns. For all members of the church, may God give us the courage to be a sign of Christ's presence in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people throughout the world, may through their faith in Christ they come to know lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry, homeless, or suffering, may they experience the comfort and consolation of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may we be open to see the presence of Christ in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for what else shall we pray this day? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, today we especially remember Marjorie Gormley. May they rest in eternal peace in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you know these, the prayers we bear and bring within us and all that we ask in the confidence of the one you've sent, Christ our Lord. We bless you, Lord, our God of all creation. Only by your goodness do we have before us the bread we offer. Our earth has given it. Human hands have made it. This will become the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Only by your goodness do we have the wine we offer, fruit of your vines, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray together with me that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to our loving and faithful God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name. Lord our God, we ask 
that upon the one sacrifice made by Christ your Son, our participation in this mystery, we will possess the last gifts we have awaiting us, for which our faith calls us to hope, eternal life with Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly it is right and just, our duty and salvation, that we gather, Father Almighty, eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For all the prophets foretold him, and the Virgin Mother longed for him with a love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming, and he proclaimed his presence when at last he was among us. It is by his gift that we already rejoice in the mystery of his birth and nativity, so that we may find us watchful in prayer, exultant in his praise. So now, with all the holy women and men, with all God's angels and saints, we acclaim your glory when together we say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, you are indeed holy, for you are the font of all holiness. So we pray, make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like dew, that these will become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion, Christ took bread and giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Then in a similar way, when that supper had ended, he took the chalice and again gave you thanks. Gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the memory of me. Let us proclaim this mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Now, Father, we gather, and here we celebrate this memorial of Christ's death and resurrection. For here we offer you the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you hold us worthy to be in your presence, to minister to you. Humbly then, Father, we pray that our partaking, our sharing in this, the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember then, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Help us to bring that fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and indeed with all who minister within your church. Remember our brothers, our sisters, who have already fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. Indeed, all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us, Father. Keep us in communion with Mary, the mother of God, her spouse Joseph, with your apostles, the martyrs, Indeed, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we be co-heirs to the same eternal life and so praise and glorify you through Christ, the risen Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and all honor is yours forever and ever. Now, following the command of Christ, taught by divine teaching, 
we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver now, Lord, all from every evil, and grant peace in our day. And in your mercy keep us, free of sin, safe from all distress. For we await the blessed hope, the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. It was the Lord Jesus who said, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and grant all that peace and unity of the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lord who comes to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. Let us use our communion anaphon today, taken from the Gospel of Luke. The angel said to Mary, Behold, you will conceive and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus.
Let us pray together. Now, Lord, we ask to give your divine protection to those you have called and renewed with your holy food, this heavenly gift, so that those who delight in the celebration of these mysteries, you will give them the joy of true and lasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And so may God's blessing go with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God.